I'm Connie Gian. I trust that you're all surviving this temperamental weather. I know that many of you were sick last week, and it's especially important now to wash your hands and take plenty of vitamin C during the weather like this. So today's vlog is inspired by a couple of you, and it's a topic that I feel most of you have been struggling with for a very long time. So here goes. Many of you come seeking help in addressing your health issues. Whether it's simple arthritic pain, fatigue, gut pain, blood pressure, autoimmune disease, or high cholesterol, the root cause is not so black and white sometimes. And I can con confidently tell you that underneath the host of physiological symptoms, there's a stress that feeds into the emotional turmoil that seems to coincide with such symptoms. I treat many women, and I've found that underneath the surface, many of you are conflicted emotionally, and those emotions are deep-rooted. Deep-rooted in feeling inadequate. And it may be due to guilt, resentment, or simply pain from the past. You've spent your life supporting your family, and now you realize that your health is not optimal. You work hard to get somewhere and to be a better person, a wife, a friend, and a mother. And you want to accomplish more, do more, and constantly strive to get better, always running towards something. But sometimes while you cook or work or read a story to your kids or take care of your mom, you constantly worry. Underneath this worry is the fear that something is wrong with everything, or that something will go wrong. Or maybe you don't know what's wrong, so you pretend everything is okay, and it's not. And you know this is completely illogical. So today, I just wanted to let you know that we all feel this way from time to time. You're not alone. And I choose to talk about this topic today because I know that many of you, while seeking answers to better health, remain conflicted within. And, and I want you to know that acknowledging your feelings is the first step to transformation. So from there, now we can move on. So let's shift gears and talk about successful aging. So everyone is subject to the ticking of the clock. And every second of every minute that goes by, we're getting older. And getting older means that our bodies are degenerating and unless you help slow down the degeneration, you will feel the pain of aging. So I want you to close your eyes for a minute and think about how you wanna spend your time in retirement. Some of you are busy raising kids, some of you are busy working and raising kids, and some of you are marrying off your kids and taking care of your elderly parents. Wherever you are, I think it's worth your time to think about the quality of your life after retirement. I have many patients that have aged with me, and as they face retirement today, they're unable to even fathom travels and leisure due to physical and health limitations. So today, I want to let you know that it's not too late to set yourself up to be able to do these things. As a rehab professional, I believe one should work on mobility, flexibility, stability, and strength. In a distracted environment today, it's so easy to lose sight of how you are moving. Before we know it, our bodies become stiff, achy, rusty, and arthritic. I want to show you what you should be able to do physically to prove you're on the right track when it comes to quality of aging. So think of this as a functional assessment for what you're capable of doing because if we just are sedentary all the time, um, things are going to get rusty and arthritic like I mentioned. So see if you can stand with feet shoulder width apart and sink your hips all the way down and as you do so, I want you to tuck your tailbone slightly under and when you look down sure that the knees are behind your toes, right? And then come all the way up and see if you can do it five times. So exhale down and inhale back and see if you can raise your toes up as well. So exhale down, making sure that upper body stays upright and back. Make sure you're not going down with your legs, right? So keep your upper body back. So that's three. And every time you go down, see if you can go down further and come back. One last time, 
As you go down, see if you can go low, 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 low. And all the way down and gently land on your bum. And then you're going to bring your legs up and see if you can balance on your sit bones and then get your legs up. It's fine to keep a slight bend on your knees. If you have no flexibility in your hamstrings or you're weak in the core, you're not going to be able to straight off make it straight. Ideally though, you want to be here in a Navasana or boat pose in yoga, right? This is a nice little exercise for you to kind of keep here for about five deep breaths, okay? And if you're unable to do this, keep a slight bend, that's a little modification. And if you're still unable to do that, feel free to open up your chest, making sure that you have a slight extension in your spine and keep your chest up. And this is going to be a lot for your core as well. I'm particular about posture and alignment. So make sure that everything is nice and perfect when you're setting yourself up, okay? From there, you're going to go ahead and cross at your ankles and bring your palms down onto the floor and go into a high plank or push-up position. So press firmly through the palms of your hands. It's particularly important to have the palms of your hands below your shoulders. Tuck your tailbone slightly under. Really press through the palms of your hands and get a slight flexion, hollowing of the spine. Look at my back. You see how it's kind of slightly rounded, tailbone tucked under, and hold here for about five breaths. This tuck of the tailbone is going to really engage the deeper muscles of your core posture. This is a nice little hard exercise to kind of get your overbody postural muscles to engage. So after about five breaths, you're going to come gently down onto your knees. Now, if you can sit like this, Japanese style, great. If not, you can go ahead and um, sit on your bum, cross your legs, or however way. And at this point, if you're uncomfortable with being on your being on the floor, go ahead and um, find the chair. So next is called the cow face pose. You're gonna bring your right arm up, bend your elbow so that your hand is reaching between your shoulder blades, and with the left hand, you're just going to press the right elbow slightly down a little bit, creating this nice stretch in your shoulders. And if this is easy for you, see if you can bring your left arm back and reach up between your shoulder blades and see if you can interlace your fingers and open up your chest a little bit more, chin up a little bit. And hold here, take a deep breath in and down. This this stretch is particularly good if you're working in front of the computer all day um, and you've had a history of frozen shoulder. That's a very common one that I see in my physical therapy practice. So this is going to keep everything nice and fluid. So release and do the exact opposite. So left arm goes back and press down and hold here for about five minutes. And if you were able to do this, again, right hand goes back, reaches back, and then interlace your arm, open up your chest, keeping a slight extension in your spine and breathe. And then you're gonna release, and that's it. So great job. If these exercises were doable for you, congratulations, you're on the right track. However, if they were challenging for you, it means your joints have gotten a little rusty. And chances are, if you left to do nothing, you'll have difficult time functioning after retirement. But it's not too late to change this. So if you get started now, you'll be able to be on your road to improvement in no time at all. And even though these exercises may be difficult at first, the more you practice, the more flexible and strong your body will become. So practice Practice these every day and I promise you'll see improvement. Thanks for watching and see you next week.